it's time for me to build the garden boxes that go inside this enclosure. Um, it's going to be made out of uh, two by sixes stacked on top of each other, four by fours in each corner, four by fours in the middle with a cross brace connecting them so when they're filled up with dirt they don't bow out. I so need to build my miter saw station that I've been talking about for the last year. Uh, but this is a setup similar to the one I had set up before but the stop lock is here and I'll check it every few few minutes or so every couple cuts I'll take a quick measurement and uh, make sure that I'm cutting them the right length Next step is to cut 30, 30 of these. Here's one box made. It's probably 100, 150 pounds. And what I'll do is I'll uh, open this door and drag it out and drag it to uh, the driveway and load it into my truck. And I'll stick, sit them up on their sides. And I'll get three across? No, I can get four across and one on top. So I'll get all these garden boxes in one load to take over there. So believe it or not, this battery is still on its first charge. I built the entire wall panels, assembled the entire wall panels, and have now completed two garden boxes. And the battery, it's about ready to conk out. So just wanted to let you know how long a DeWalt XR 5 amp hour battery lasts. It lasts a really long time. 
Now, one other thing I wanted to show you is this tool is heating up. I've been really giving it a workout, and hopefully you can see this. Eh. Can you see the temperature there? Really not that bad. Nothing is going to melt at 104 degrees. Uh, 106, 109. So about 110 degrees, and it's about 60, low 60s in here right now. Now, as for the battery, battery 75, 76, 73, 72, and the, uh, the drill here, or the impact is still low 100s. I've got three built so far, and I'm getting into a rhythm. So this video here, or this, uh, this box, I'm going to time myself just to see how long it takes me to fully assemble one. So take a guess, put it down below. Ready, set, go. Thirteen minutes. If I could shave a few seconds off, if I didn't lose the tip and drop so many screws. I think I just have two more to go. Jeez, never ending. Got my first load of dirt. It's kind of wet, so it's about 1,800 pounds per yard. And this is in my Ram 1500. Set my sandwich right there. And got airbags. And this thing is actually at its normal ride height right now. Um, you can see. Um, there you go, right there. It's a good shot. That is the uh, the bump stops. Not even close to hitting the bump stops. These are Rancho 9000 X X something. It's written right there. But they're adjustable. They are. Are they cranked all the way up? Yeah, they're all the way up on their stiffest setting right now. And these airbags are really a lifesaver for doing this type of work with only a, uh, a 1500. Now I took one of the panels down, back the truck right up, and I'm gonna start filling these up. They're gonna take about a yard of dirt for each box. This is a potting mix. There's a breakdown, but it's like, it's got um, some sort of fertilizer stuff in it. Haven't taken anything out yet, so this is about what you can expect a yard of dirt to look like in the bed of your truck.
fills up one and a half, one and a half garden boxes, four by eight by one foot garden boxes. Piece of cake, pull right up, they dump it right in, drive down the road. This landscaping place is actually pretty close to the house. So, uh, yeah, it's like two miles. Now this, like I said, uh, a yard of dirt varies on its weight depending on how wet it is. We've had some rain and so it's a little heavier. This half ton, would pr it would probably be on the bump stops if, uh, if I didn't have the airbags. Now, I'm not going to get this truck up over 40 miles an hour, so I wouldn't take 1,800 pounds to, a, you know, 2,000 pounds on the highway, mainly because of uh, the tires. The tires on this, this is like a light truck, um, so the, the tires that are on this are not rated for that much weight. The next one, the next truck, oh, I can't wait, can't wait. I'm gonna build the biggest, baddest work truck, but I gotta wait. It'll probably be a year from now. I would like to, it only to be six months from now, but um, heavy duty work trucks are ridiculously expensive. Even used ones are, into the, the high 40s. Seven oh six. Now I put in a good day's work, and uh, I really want to call it a day and go home. But uh, this is something that people who are new to self-employment need to learn and understand, and also people who hire people who do this type of service, handyman, carpenter, you name it. Um, we don't have any sort of compensation package on top of. An hourly wage or what we charge you there's no no vacation time there is no holiday pay you even I think uh, you know any professional educated professional that that has a real career gets at least some sort of um, retirement whether it's a, a matching plan they get a, an accrued paid time off as part of their compensation package they definitely get an allotted amount of, of national holidays paid. What else do they get? Health insurance benefits. Um, a lot of them get um, disability benefits. So a self-employed person has none of that. 
And if I want to take a day off, that means I have to work two days. Or, or that means I have to work an extra day. And how do you get an extra day? Is you work more hours in, in one day. So if I can get 10 hours in one day, I get like a rollover. And I get paid for that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to dark, just like I did the other night. Um, I'm out of dirt, the dirt place is closed. So I'll hang the door, I'll get all the bracing for the roof on, cross members for the roof on. That's really all there is left, is after that it's just the dirt. So I'll be done by noon tomorrow if I finish out the rest of the day here. Okay, there's a lot of concerns about this chicken wire here. This is my thumb, you see that? Um, not sure how many of you have held a squirrel in your hands before, but I have physically held dozens of squirrels in my hands, and I know for a fact they were not, they will not fit through a hole that's just a little bit bigger than the width of my thumb. customer that was that happy with something that I built. Um, she was taking pictures, she was tweeting it and putting it on Instagram and sending it to her family or friends. Um, it's going to turn into a lot of work. She's already got a huge list of things that she wants me to build. So it was a great project. Even though it was short notice and it was a few long hard days, uh, it's going to pay off tenfold. A few things I wanted to mention before I before this video is over um, there was questions on nails versus screws wanted to tell you about the screws that I used and why these are are the best product um, off-the-shelf product you get these right at, at Lowe's or Home Depot 
This is a uh, deckmate, um, guaranteed for life. These are coated with some sort of epoxy paint. They've got a different type of thread than just your standard deck screw. Um, what does it say here? Aggressive serrated auger threads. Um, five pounds, 30 bucks. I went through two of these. I got a, I got a couple left over. Uh, it is a uh, star bit, Torx bit. Or if you, I think if you're from Canada, they call it uh, Robertson screw. Uh, but it is a T25 Torx bit uh, on the head there. Next is uh, the staples. The staples are galvanized staple. I'll show you the dimensions. Quarter inch by three quarters of an inch. The next most common question was, am I going to bolt the walls to the blocks, uh, the retaining wall blocks? Uh, the answer is no. So that's not the proper way to anchor uh, something like this, whether it be a shed. Some areas, garden sheds, uh, it's a code requirement that they're anchored to the ground. And the most common way that I've seen to anchor a garden shed or a structure like I built in this video would be there's these screws kind of like an auger screw they're big like this and you turn them you screw them down into the ground and they got a loop on them and then you take either a galvanized or a coated wire and you wrap it around that and you wrap it around your building or your structure and you that's how you fasten it. There's these connectors that, that grab a hold of the loop. You cinch down on them, and that's how you would anchor it uh, if you're in a, a high wind area. Um, I don't think this is not going to move with just high winds. It would take a, a wind event uh, for this thing to move. It's, it's just two by fours. Now, if this was made, it had like side panels, like solid side panels that air can't you know pass through then that's a different story but as it sits uh, I'm not anchoring it down uh, I don't think it's going anywhere I'm gonna try something new tomorrow for the next project uh, I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna record the entire day just to give you uh, to give you a, a different uh, different view of my day as a handyman I got a decent project uh, I really want to get it done in one day. I bid it for one day. If I got to go make two more trips, um, I won't make as much money. Uh, and I got something else planned for the next day. So it'll be kind of a long day. Uh, it's on a rental house. I gave an estimate on this project months ago. But I'll get more into that when I film tomorrow. If you like this video, uh, give it a like and if you could share it that would help the channel out a lot um, how does it help the channel well it helps the channel grow and the, the more the channel grows uh, the more videos I get to make and I think we all would benefit from that um, so share it on your Facebook uh, Instagram Twitter um, whatever social media you're signed up for uh, feel free to pass this video or any of my other videos along to your friends, family, ex-wife. That's it. I don't have anything else for you. Uh, comments, questions, more uh, suggestions on safety glasses, um, put them in the comment section.